folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, back and ready to do a new movie review in November, all this week. <laughs> yep, now the daylight savings had ended, so it's going to be dark at 5 o'clock, and I know today's election day, but hey, I'll get ready to vote for sure. But I'm just going to do a brand new movie before I get to that. My last movie review was Life Force, which I just recently picked up the 4K and Blu-ray release from Shell Factory as part of the Scream Factory label, you know, for horror movies and all, uh, which is an excellent, re which is a great release, in my opinion. I mean, despite the fact that they didn't put in the director's cut on the 4K release, it only has a domestic cut from TriStar, with Canon co-producing the film. From master director, the late great Toby Hooper, you know, gave us Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which the transfer, having to watch this on HDR with the bombastic sound of Dolby Atmos track, which also includes the Dolby True HD 7.1, the DTS HD Master Audio, both 5.1 and 2.0 sound, yes, that would be stereo. Um, which is based on the 70 millimeter 6 track uh, Dolby Stereo and THX and all that. It, it just works so well. Where you get to listen to the memorable score of Henry Massini, even though it has the additional music by Michael Kamen and all. And not to mention this very insane plot device, which is totally bonkers, uh, out of this world. Uh, filled with a blend of horror elements of of a zombie movie, a vampire film, mixed in with a disaster film, eroticism, love story, filled with gratuitous nudity and sex. There's a lot of violence in the movie. Um, it's a space film. It's an auto autopsy forensic film. I mean, you name it. It's all blended in together. And it is a British film, too, but it's also American. So, of course, we got both cuts to be included. That's also on the to this Blu-ray set. has all the features. Um, yep, both the, the 4K and Blu-ray uh, for the domestic theatrical cut are came directly from the original camera negative, while the director's cuts, the definitive one that has 15 minutes of footage uh, restored, intact, uh, that Toby Hooper improved at the time. He, uh, that's the, which is the best one, of course. Um, <laughs> yes, it was, uh, it was drive, uh, restored, um, from a 4K scan uh, out of a 35 millimeter print, um, interpositive. Yes, and it has all the features uh, except for the featurette that was included on the 2013 release at the time, which is out of print, but if you get a chance, maybe you might take it just for that. Uh, there's also an Arrow release, which is overseas, if you want some more features or any other, or maybe a, even more uptick transfer and, un and then encode and all, who knows, take your pick. I mean, especially if you're a fan of the movie, for sure. Uh, anyway, <laughs> now that we're off the topic here, because I've already had to do all these commercial breaks on my channel and getting more subs and all to continue. Yes, I'm wearing my uh, super bad t-shirt with McLovin. Yeah, you can see Christopher Vince Plaus. Um, I got this shirt, um, I think, on Christmas or my birthday. But it's a great shirt. Um, I I hope someday I'll still review that movie if I ever get a chance. But I just never have time. Because I know it's already celebrating its 15th anniversary. <laughs> but yeah, he created a fake ID. So that way he'll be able to get some alcohol with his friends. You know, before he gets knocked out. <laughs> by um, a bank... <laughs> by a local robber at a liquor store and then he got picked up by the cops <laughs> and you get the idea well anyway 
Well, I am going to be reviewing a comedy, but it's a brand new comedy. That's a satirical biopic, and it's featured none other than Weird Al Yankovic. Yes, uh, the the big Afro perm with some nerdy glasses, mustache, wears a Hawaiian shirt and some goofy pants, has an accordion, plays some polka, but also does you know music parodies of very popular music artists that we had uh, during our generations like the 80s 90s 2000s and even today <laughs> for that matter yes um and he just sings in in a very nerdish voice <laughs> but he is very handsome very skinny white and nerdy as he could be <laughs> but he's all fun and he never disappoints, <laughs> no matter what he does. And anyway, um, it's going to be portrayed by Mr. Harry Potter himself, British actor Daniel Radcliffe, in the new movie, Weird, the Al Yankovic story, which just premiered last week on the Roku channel, which is a streaming app uh, that's available on Roku. It's part of it, of course, but they also have it on other streaming devices, including the Amazon Fire TV Stick, which also includes the 4K and the Cube and any other. Yeah, and they have it on Roku TV, which has a live TV channel guide, which is like cable TV and satellites that you just get to check to see what's on on each of these streaming channels available. But you also get um, like regular antenna TV, or if you have cable, you know, you just join in with it. Like you hook it up to a cable box, you'll definitely get the guides and all. Or hell, if you have satellite, you probably do the same too. <laughs> With that aside. Yeah, because as you may know, uh, it's also available on Roku TV, on any product, like either HD or 4K. And I have the 4K the, of TCL, the 43 inch, which I can't believe I got that within a year during my last Black Friday uh, deal. <laughs> yeah, but it was a great deal, like $270 worth it. So yeah, um, so it is available. You get to watch movies, TV shows, sports, other programs. Uh, sometimes they even throw in some other programs and movies available on all the pay TV services that you have to pay for once you connect it to it. Um, but not other than less, though, it is for free. Uh, you get to watch every show that's available and movie. But unfortunately, there are going to be ads included. So here we go. <laughs> anyway. I mean, it's a story where Real Al uh, just does his satirical biopics like any other movie that we got, you know, whenever it's Bohemian Rhapsody, Rocket Band, Selena, The Doors, or any other. I mean, he just basically parodies all of that, um, which is based upon, loosely, <laughs> and termed loosely, of Yankee Vic's uh, life and career. For sure. But it almost looked like he was in an alternate universe in a way. Filled with uh, celebrity cameos. Um, some of your familiar stars, uh, especially from the 80s, you know, like Dr. Demento, you got P.B. Herman, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, Wolfman Jack, uh, Gallagher, you know, comedian, and um, many others uh, that you'll spot. And you even got Madonna, too. <laughs> and then so on and so forth. <laughs> okay. Now, um, back to the subject here before I review the film, once again. Because <laughs> I am very excited to do this. I've been a huge We're All Yankovic fan ever since I was a kid. I mean, I remember back in the 80s, I was watching MTV 
VH1 and the Jukebox Network, which would soon become the Box. Um, yeah, which is a cable network that played uh, music videos 24-7. You had to choose a track of each of them that are available. You had to call up, um, dial the number. It's like a dollar um, per minute. And they'll be able to add it for you and, and they'll be ready to play it. It's, it's kind of like... Uh, an actual jukebox uh, where you have to pick in the number or letter and number that are available on each track and you, you put a quarter in there and it'll play it for you <laughs> at your local diner or any other place <laughs> yeah but yeah I, I did watch some Where All Yankovic videos uh, where he did all these parodies of songs like um, like My Bologna uh, joining in with Eat It, uh, I Love Rocky Road, another one, uh, Rides the Bus. <laughs> yeah, they're all parodies of songs uh, by by The Knack, which is My Sharona, and also Joan Jett, which was I Love Rock and Roll. Yeah, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts. And, of course, another one, Bites of Dust, was by Queen, and... Well, you get the idea, but he also parodies uh, songs uh, by Michael Jackson, Madonna, um, Devo, and uh, <laughs> and even Wet Out Chili Peppers, uh, among many others. I mean, even ones that are one-hit wonders. I mean, he just parodies all of them, which is amazing, too, because all the lyrics that he added onto his songs, and they are original songs that he parodied, for because he's he's the one person who can do so they make more sense I mean even with the music videos uh, that they play it makes more sense compared to the music videos that they've done so that's just what makes it so funny and incredible and it's just it's so demented um, edgy dark humor but it just you just love it you just can't help it. And even kids will love it, too, for sure. Because he has that bit of a childish behavior uh, syndrome here, if you could say so. Because he does, you know, talk and, and sing in his nerdish voice this way. So anyway, that that's why I love him. You know, he had his first movie called UHF. I love that movie. I wish it got the attention it deserves that summer. I wish it wasn't a bomb at the box office, but I thought it was fun that he got to do a his first movie where he, he bought a, a UHF station, Channel 62, where he gets to play all the variety programs and stuff that cable TV will actually do, but no other network would. And he, has, he had to compete against that villain, who, of course... <laughs> You know, wants to demand more ratings and all. Yeah. Very fun. And he even had his own TV show called The We're Out Show, which was on CBS um, back in the late 90s. It was 1997 to be exact. Uh, this was back when when CBS was just going through um, pretty downhill when it comes to super... when it comes to these Saturday morning cartoons, because... They were under the competition with other networks that were having a bigger block, you know, like Fox Kids and ABC and Kids WB come to mind. Uh, I know NBC just continues to play their team programming because they, they totally dumped all the, super, the Saturday morning cartoons they had in the early 90s. Yeah, I mean, it's competition, folks. <laughs> That's what happens when you have to try to search or channel serve any other network to actually be able to watch these shows that you love. It's really hard. But then with cable TV and satellite coming around, I mean, that's that's the case. <laughs> yeah. But, boy, I still miss Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> and trust me, we all do. But hey, they, they did tend to bring it back. I mean, MeTV is now playing Saturday morning cartoons and as well as uh, weekday mornings 
Um, but it's mostly, you know, Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry and stuff. And, and I think there's Popeye and Betty Boop on there. Yeah, just, just your old school cartoons. But they also have the Flintstones and the Jetsons on there, too. <laughs> so, hey, it's... And you got Saved by the Bell on there, so, hey. That's all the reruns you could watch. <laughs> But then we have streaming, so you can watch whatever is available, or you can just buy it on DVD or Blu-ray, you know, physical media available, and just create your own channel in, in the whole way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no matter what decade he was in, even today, I mean, now that he's in his 60s, hard to believe, early 60s. He, in fact, he's... Um, He's 63 this year, hard to believe. Just turned 63. And he still looks quite as young. I mean, maybe a little older, but still quite as young and fresh. I mean, he doesn't, I mean, he already dissed his, his mustache and his glasses since the 90s. And he did grow his, uh, his entire uh, perm. Yeah, he grew as long as he can. But he just continues to do all the parodies of, of today's songs from today's artists, as, as we know. But his, even his parodies are more funnier than than any of today's music. So it's, it's cool. <laughs> and, oh, and he does have a brand new song, too, uh, included for this new movie. So this is awesome. So, yes, uh, I, I used to watch all the music videos on each of these channels, and I never get tired of them. And I always wanted to watch everything that he does. No matter what. And, you know, I, I even started getting the CDs and stuff for a while. And, you know, I, I got to start getting more. <laughs> I really do. And I, and I do watch them on YouTube as well. I mean, he has his YouTube channel and he, he can do anything he wants. He even had an appearance, uh, just a tiny appearance at the end credits of Bill and Ted's Face to Music. So, yeah, if you... I say if you pause the film, when they show the scene where he was playing the accordion during the end credits, that's him. Hard to believe. It was like a tiny uh, cameo. Uh, that's for sure. And of course, uh, there's going to be a brand new song that's going to be featured in the soundtrack. I'm just glad they came back for that. Not to mention, uh, I also did have the CD of the Dr. Demento uh, Christmas CD, which did feature a song by Will Yankovic, because after all, Dr. Demento is indeed his mentor. Uh, there was a song called Christmas at Ground Zero. Yeah, remember that one? It's Christmas at Ground Zero. There's panic in the ground. Yeah, you know that. I I I don't want to. I I don't want to butcher it. I mean, come on. He, he's such a genius. I mean, he, he does it better than I do. And one thing I really did realize too was that that one song that Will Yankovic has done was featured in the soundtrack of Transformers the movie. Yes, and it was a parody of a Devil song, simply called "Dare to Be Stupid." Yes, and this is probably how I, I sort of got introduced, sort of, but it wasn't until I started watching all the music videos and all that, so it's really awesome. And I know my, my father loves him, so is my brother Jason, um, even Eileen loves it too, my mom loves it, I mean, we, we never get tired of it, we always have fun whenever we put in, you know, so we're all Yankovic. Just to laugh by, just to sing by, and all that, all that stuff. You know, just it's hilarious. Anyway, the the movie is being produced not only by Roku, uh, it's also produced by Funny or Die. Uh, it's a comedy website that's run by uh, comedian uh, Will Ferrell, joining in with Anna McKay. Also joined with uh, Mark uh, Cavani and Chris Henshi. So they created it in, in 2007 so they can have all these 
dark, edgy, offensive um, skits that they perform with many celebrities to join in. That's even more harder, and they can pretty much can get away with it um, compared to what you watch on Saturday Night Live and other parody shows, you know, comedy sketches of any kind. So it's really cool. Um, if you ever go to that website, you'll be able to find a whole selection of parodies um, as well as um, a lot of these commercials that they spoof on and, and all these uh, short films, even trailers and all that stuff. And apparently this was, uh, they even did do a spoof trailer for, for this biopic before this even did happen. So what do you know? And it's just... <laughs> I swear, I mean, if you go to that website, you'll be able, you'll be able to laugh, and it's going to be insane. <laughs> okay, well, let's, uh, anyway, because now that we're getting to the review now, because I'm already taking too much of my time, I'm going to say is that it's in, ingeniously hilarious. Yes, there are inaccuracies here and there, but you know what, that's how it's intended to be, and we're going to keep it that way. So here we go. It stars Daniel Radcliffe with Dyrich Bader. Yes, Dyrich Bader from uh, the Drew Carey show, and he was in Napoleon Dynamite, as we know, and he's done a lot of stuff. Uh, he was even in the, um, the French Prince of Bel Air with Will Smith. Uh, David Bloom, Richard Aaron Anderson, Evan Rachel Wood. Yes, Evan Rachel Wood uh, from the movie uh, Little Secrets, and she was in the movie The Wrestler. I mean, she's an activist, um, but an excellent actress. Uh, Wayne Wilson from The Office, and so on. <laughs> uh, Toby Huss, you may remember him as the strongest man in the world. Yeah, Artie. <laughs> Yeah, from the Adventures of Pete and Pete. Boy, he sure looks different now than, than he was then. Uh, but he also has done voice acting for King of the Hill. You know, as uh, Khan and and all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Julianne Nicholson, um, who was from the movie August uh, Osage County, along with Blonde and Law and Order Criminal Attempts. Uh, all come to mind. Uh, Spencer Tree Clark. Uh, yes, you may remember him from Mystic River. Um, Much Ado About Nothing, the 2012 adaptation. Last House on the Left remake from 2009. And Glass, as well as uh, Gladiator and, and Unbreakable. Yeah. Uh, Jack Lancaster, Tommy O'Brien, Thomas Lennon. Uh, Ataro uh, Castro, Quinta Brunson, um, Will Forte, Jack Black, yes, Jack Black, uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda, yes, you know him, uh, Alcanto, Hamilton in the Heights, yes, but we don't talk about him, <laughs> or we don't talk about Bruno, well, he also did Vivo, too, <laughs> recently. Uh, Scott Aquaman, Dot Marie Jones, and We Are All Yankovic himself. <laughs> awesome. Cool. And they also had some cameos, like, that's all played by other actors, too, like Conan O'Brien, uh, Dimitri Martin, Paul F. Tompkins, Nina West, uh, Jorme Tacone, Akiva Schaffer, Michael McKeon, Josh Groban, yes, Josh Groban, singer, songwriter, and um, Suzanne uh, Kodruski. Okay. Yep, it's written by Al Yankovic himself, uh, joining in with Erica Peel, who also directed this movie, and this is his directorial debut. Um, he actually has done. Um, Wrote, he wrote a lot of TV shows, including The Office, as I mentioned. 
Um, and he also had did some episodes of Crank Yankers, yeah, and and he's done com a lot of commercials and stuff. And he actually had and other movies. He's I think yeah, like other movies he wrote, I believe. So it's it's really cool. I'm not joking here. This review is going to contain spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, I beg you, go to the Roku channel, find the movie, and watch it for yourself before you tune in to YouTube to watch my review. You with me so far? Good. Because here we go. The movie begins where we meet Alfred Yankeevic, nicknamed Al, who is soon to be played by Daniel Radcliffe, who as a child wants to become very interested in parodying songs that he listened to on the radio because he has his favorite programs coming on. Unfortunately, against his father's Nick wishes, and Nick is played by Toby Huss, while his mom, which is uh, Nick's wife, uh, Mary, played by Julianne Nicholson, had secretly purchased an accordion for Al, you know, after uh, Nick eventually just brutally punches and just knocks him straight into the wall and punches him constantly in the face until the blood comes out of him, uh, of the sale man. And now, uh, since this was going to be a an early Christmas gift. He finally got the accordion, so he'll soon be able to learn how to play all these polka songs, you know, polka, and all these parodies that he'll have a chance to do before he becomes a star. Well, he did attend at a polka party with his friends, even forces him to play the accordion. Um, the entire crowd was very pleased when he got to play it until so, got caught by the police and that's when Nick found out that he has the accordion and destroy it shattered into millions of pieces what an asshole because all he wants his son to do was to become you know like indeed a, a strong working class um, employee at his uh, steel mill factory but he doesn't want to. So, while at college, um, he's living with his roommates, Steve, Jim, and Bermuda, all played by Spencer Tree Clark, Jack Lancaster, and Tommy O'Brien, who Al was trying to join in a band because they were hoping that they'd be interested in having an accordion player, but he keeps getting rejected. While he ends up hearing the song my Sharona by the Knack, you know, My Sharona. Um, while I was playing on the radio by uh, a local DJ on the radio station, but unfortunately the record is constantly repeating as if the vinyl record was, was having several issues here. While he was fixing a bologna sandwich for his friend here, and that's where he begins to hear the lyrics through his head that he came up with. And that's where he created the song, My Bologna. And his friends love it. They were very pleased, his roommates. So now they just recorded their very first song. And he sent it by mail with his cassette to uh, Scotty Brothers Records, which would soon become um, Al Yankovic's uh, new record deal, where he's going to be able to perform all of his songs, all which are, are novelty parody songs um, of all the albums that he's going to be able to work on as decades go on, if it becomes very successful, for sure. Anyway, well, while the brothers um, 
And that includes uh, Tony Scotty, who's played by, you guessed it, folks, we're all Yankovic himself. And I know he provided his on screen um, singing voice perfectly uh, as it sounds. Um, they are willing to reconsider if Al gains more experience. So that means if he has performed some more songs of his own, that yes, I mean, now. Because already My Bologna had became a big hit on radio. He you know, had more exposure. And if he ever does continue to do more, he'll finally get the deal. Which he did. So that's when Al performs um, the parody of Joan Jett's and the Black Hearts uh, song, I Love Rock and Roll, with I Love Rocky Road. <laughs> yes, so... Uh, which is, of course, the uh, Rocky Road ice cream, you know, chocolate, blend in with marshmallows and almonds. I mean, delicious. Uh, he's joined in with the band as uh, they played, you know, the backup. And that's where, you know, the entire uh, bikers have really enjoyed the, this entire performance of his. I mean, he got nervous at first, but they, they stepped in and... And that's when soon-to-be mentor, Dr. Demento, who was played by Rain Wilson, of course, had just um, gathered around and, and really enjoy um, Al Yankovic's uh, performance. And this is where he rechristened his name, Weird Al Yankovic. And he loved it. So now he'll, he soon uh, catches the interest and... And then uh, Dr. Demento had invited uh, Al and, and his roommates uh, to a local party where he's hanging around with all the guests around, which includes uh, <laughs> Annie Walhall, who's, of course, played by Conan O'Brien. Uh, you also got uh, P.B. Herman, played by uh, Jorme Tacone. Uh, you got Divine, played by Nina West. Um, Alice Cooper, played by Akiva Schaffer, Gallagher, the comedian, played by Paul F. Tompkin, Tiny Tim, played by Dimitri Martin, Emo, F they even got uh, Emo Phillips to play Salvador Dali. Uh, yes, Emo Phillips, of course, is one of the comedians that we all have worked on, worked with later. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> And of course, Wolfman Jack, who's played by Jack Black. And he was very interested somehow, and, and that's where we got one of the band members from Queen to actually offer him to join in Live Aid, but he says, Fat Chance. So, therefore, um, because uh, John, yes, it was John Deacon, the, the band member of Queen, which apparently he did came up with the song Another One Bites the Dust, which Al eventually parodied Another One Rides the Bus. And that's how he became a huge hit. I mean, the brothers were interested, and now he, he's, he had his entire debut album that goes multi platinum. So he lands in his record contract with Scotty Brothers Records. And the original artists are getting the Yankee Vic bump, for sure. So that means now that he's going to start doing parodies of all these pop songs and rock songs from many artists in record sales. Um, well, Al is, is given an interview with Oprah Winfrey. However, uh, while he's at New York because he's going to perform a concert in Madison Square Garden soon. Uh, Al gets a call to find that his father is still dismissive of him, but Dr. Demento suggests Al to make his own original song. For sure, yeah, well, Demento was, was uh, taking a, uh, a nice hot, uh, hot jacuzzi, <laughs> for sure, while eating some 
some nachos with uh, guacamole dip that has this very strong uh, psychedelic um, kick to it. <laughs> so, of course, his next original song, which eventually turns out to be, you wouldn't believe this, Eat It. Yes, which, as we all know, because this is an alternate universe here, the song Beat It by Michael Jackson was the original song, the true original song, before Al had did his own parody, for sure. I know, so they, they just want to throw this in for, for size. So now, um, Yankee Bick now has his own mansion. You know, he does have all the paintings on the wall. He has his own bust, which got shattered into pieces. And that's where Madonna came in. In his life and she's played by ever Rachel Wood and actually promised uh, him to perform in one of uh, her songs including like a virgin which is going to be a parody of like a surgeon yes cutting for the very first time like a surgeon <laughs> okay so yeah, they made love, um, Al does smoke a cigarette and all that stuff, and then next thing you know, um, he's trying to come up with some new plans and all, with the mentor, you know, being his agent and mentor and all. Um, therefore, soon um, things seems to get much worse when, when he already found out that the song Beat It just came out uh, by MJ himself and and apparently they, he thought that it was a parody song and his song was original for sure and that's where he got so furious he ends up getting advice by Madonna having him drink himself get all drunk take drugs and all and that's where he goes completely weird and, and insane he disses his friends, you know, calling him Nobis. I'm the weird one. <laughs> and then he also dismissed uh, Demento just when he was going to perform his concert at the Madison Square Garden. Well, he ends up um, getting the particularly drunk and ends up drunk driving. Almost got killed in a car accident and got sentenced directly into the hospital until he eventually woke up got his number two pencil to write down all the lyrics and hoping that he'll soon be able to recover to perform all of his parody songs in concert which after he did his performance of like a surgeon with the help of madonna eventually he ends up um well get this he was going to perform the song beat it or eat it, sorry. Yeah, he refused to wear the jacket. So he was going to perform the song Eat It, and then suddenly he refused, which leads to a parody of the, the 1969 incident with Jim Morrison, where he got into indecent exposure, which that's where he got caught by the cops and, and the guards, and he got arrested for. Well, a similar here, but he was going to bring out the accordion. <laughs> so yeah uh, after um, he got out of prison um, well he, he was at, at a local diner with Madonna and then try to see if they can if maybe Madonna will just use him as her mentor and, and all I mean his mentor for sure and maybe come up with something better until he's being caught by uh, the entire gang of that's run by a Colombian drug lord named Pablo Escobar. <laughs> yeah, hard to believe. And which this is where we get to see Weir Al just using his uh, kung fu moves to to beat the shit up out of those chefs and everyone around. Because they already kidnapped Madonna, 
all the way in Colombia, and this is where he does his sort of his Rambo impressions and all, and just or sort of like that. I mean, like he was like like he just turned into Rambo and just started uh, you know, killing all the the terrorists and all, and, and then trying to go after Pablo because it was his birthday too, and that's why he, he captured Madonna. And then soon, you know, they both killed Pablo and the rest of their friends. <laughs> uh, which has this one scene where, yeah, they did shot him, but then he took out the, one of his platinums and he threw it straight out of his head. And then now they're all alone and then Madonna just wants to take over the drug business. So now they can finally run it, but he refused. And then Madonna eventually was going to shoot him and didn't work out. So, anyway, he, he Al eventually rejects her. And now he returns home to work in his father's factory, which then he admits that he doesn't belong in this line of work. So now he just finally continues to go back to what he's doing. And this is where his father... Nick just tells him about his experience when he was a child, so he's pretty much like um, him for sure. And this is where we learn that his father was an Amish kid. Yeah, like he was in the Amish country, and and he was gonna also perform with an accordion too. Yes, he too has an accordion. That's why he had this bad experience all this time that he didn't want to join the same influence that his son was doing and what do you know it um, his mom um, Mary is is now gaining weight yeah she's gone fat I mean notice her entire um, face and now at this point he's gonna perform his next song which that turned out to be Amish Paradise which I know it was a parody of a Coolio song um, yeah, God was just so, by the way, uh, Coolio, which I know Coolio had a rivalry with him at the time before they made it up, um, because he was doing the song, um, Gangster's Paradise, uh, which was from the soundtrack of the movie Dangerous Minds, uh, with Michelle Pfeiffer, which was based on a true story, of course. Yeah, God was a soul, too. I mean, he he did sing the theme song to Keen and Kill, and I love that show, and, and I love him for that, too. Hey, he could, even got to perform on the TV show all that, too, so that's really awesome. So now we know. <laughs> and then, at that rate, um, at the Grammys, um, Al did one, for sure, until suddenly, well... There's a plan that Madonna just pulled where he hired one of the terrorists to actually assassinate, yeah, an assassin for sure, to assassinate him. Yeah. But by the end of, but at the end of it though, we learned that he became a zombie and he was ready to get revenge on Madonna because we all Yankovic died. But don't worry, folks. He wasn't really gone. <laughs> okay. Well, I said it before and I'll say it again. It's ingeniously hilarious. Filled with a lot of wit. And dark, edgy humor all together. And it really works. And Daniel Redcliffe did an excellent job portraying the role of real I Yankovic. I mean, you, there are times when he looks pretty unrecognizable. Like, I couldn't even tell that's really him underneath that makeup and with the perm, the, the nerdy glasses that he has, and the mustache and all. I mean, although I guess there are times when you can spot a little bit of him too, but it's... But I gotta say, he really nailed that performance, for sure. And this is perfect. Maybe he might get an Oscar nomination for that role. I, I hope he does, but I, I don't know how that's going to happen, but we'll see. 
but it's just amazing, you know, what he can do. Because Red Cliff is a very underrated actor. Aside from from portraying the role of Harry Potter, the wizard of Hogwarts, for sure. He can do anything. I mean, he can play different roles. He's truly a versatile actor, for sure. Because if you saw him in films like uh, Horns, or Swiss Army Man, or, hell, even the movie The Lost City recently, you can tell that he can play any other role that he chooses. So that way he won't be considered typecast as you know Harry Potter, for sure. But hey, I, I'm glad he nailed it. Uh, also, Evan Rachel Wood was excellent to portray as Madonna. I mean, it's great that she got to do some more stuff, too, and I'm glad she's still continuing. And um, also Rain Wilson playing Dr. Demento. I know originally they were going to get, um, hard to believe, but originally they were going to get Patton Oswalt to be portraying the role in the movie. Yes, he has a cameo appearance in the film as, as a heckler. But he was going to play Dr. Demento for sure until, because I heard he, he actually broke his foot. Like he couldn't play the role. For sure. I don't know why, but I guess maybe because there was going to be some radical scene right there. So we want to make I'm sure that, you know, Rain Wilson doesn't suffer either. No, but I, I thought Wilson really portrayed it better, too. So. And so was the rest of the cast. You know, they were all excellent in their roles. And great to hear the music. And also having the hear the brand new song by Yankovic himself, which I know he played Tony Scotty in the movie. I mean, he did a great job playing a different role, too, for sure. Because now you know, you can see in between, you see his old self, and you can see his new self, in a way. <laughs> well, anyway. But he just recently got a new song for the movie called now you know and yes it even explains it even if you listen to it in the credits and he just yeah as, as it rolls by he just says now you know uh which is going to be released on cd and vinyl um later next year so looking forward to that and hopefully we get more to follow i mean maybe there'll be another uh compilation album someday Feature all of We Are Yankovic's songs. Too. And I'm glad to hear it's getting excellent reviews. Thank goodness, man, because it really deserves it. I mean, come on. I mean, UHF, which was one of his first films that he's ever done from Orion Pictures. And it was an awesome movie when I saw it. So I'm just really happy that he's really, you know, having fun. And I'm glad he's back to doing whatever he can. This is a satirical parody of all these biopic movies that we got, you know, like Bohemian Rhapsody, Rocket Man, Selena, The Doors, uh, you name it. And sometimes they always add some inaccuracies in there. And then sometimes they don't. Like some some of it might be true, so <laughs> most. But that's the purpose of the story here, is that you you can do whatever the hell you want. And not get away with it. And not be criticized. Because after all, comedies are subjective. For sure. And I love comedy. And I'm glad we had it. <laughs> I'm glad this, this did exist. For sure. So yeah. Anyway. So that's weird. The Al Yankovic story. And I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.